Hello, it's Dr. Cinema. I analyze and diagnose movies and explain them to you. So obviously we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of looking at a movie or a TV show in its entirety, we're going to be looking at a specific special of a TV show. Now for the 0.1% of you that don't know, Family Guy is an animated show created by Seth MacFarlane, rated TV 14. And it focuses on the fictional family in Quahog, the family where the father and husband is Peter Griffin, then the wife Lois, then the oldest son, Chris, the daughter, Meg, both in high school, their baby, Stewie, and their dog, who can talk and drink and write books, Brian. So, so a lot of people don't like the TV show for its pop culture represents and cutaway gay comedy that it's mainly based off of. Some love the show. A smaller group find the show okay. I'm in that third group. I do manage to find some level of enjoyment out of most of the episodes. But today I want to look at one of those in particular, the two-part special, Road to the North Pole. Now, Family Guy has made several Christmas-themed episodes before this one and after this one. But this is the only Christmas themed episode where it's actually a two-parter, so technically it's two episodes. And it's one of the episodes where the stories focus on two characters of the Griffin family, Brian the dog and the baby Stewie. And to be fair, those episodes are usually my favorite. Road to Germany, which is a time travel episode, Road to the Multiverse, and, of course, Road to the North Pole. Well, let's take a look at it. So, it starts off with us getting an introduction to the narrator, surprisingly, which is supposedly Seth MacFarlane's dad. Uh, this is the only time I'm actually going to mention him in this entire review, so this one to let you know there's a narrator. And then we start with the Griffin family. As the Griffin family sings what they want for Christmas, Peter wants... Um, naked Megan Fox, Lois, I think, wants a group of sexy black men, Stewie wants uranium, and Brian's just telling everyone how all that's ridiculous. It's catchy enough. Not, not a particular song anyone's going to go back home sing about. What am I talking about? If you're watching this, you are at home. But anyway, then they... Then it cuts to Brian taking Stewie to the mall where he's going to meet Santa because even though this is a kid who has created a time travel machine, a teleporter, a device to travel through the multiverse, as well as a, as well as a plethora of death guns and other machines, he still believes in Santa. It's a TV show. It's not meant to have a continuity or supposed to make any sense. So just go along with it. So after a brief encounter with a supporting character, Glenn Quagmire and his niece, we are reminded that even though Brian Griffin is a lot of times a douche, in this particular instance, he's not actually a douche, or at least not purposely. So, anyway, they wait in the line for a long while, and but when they do actually get to the front of the line, Santa's like, ah, that's pretty much it for the day, goodbye. So this pretty much angers Stewie, the bad Santa, tells Stewie to buzz off, and that's the end of that sequence, I guess, because then it cuts to some time afterwards. They never really specify whether it's later that day or if it's the next day. But... When it does come to, Stewie wants Brian to take him to see Santa. So, Brian decides, why not? And he takes him to actually a christmas theme amusement park. Where you can pet some animals and do other stuff. There's very few people there and it looks fairly run down. And Stewie actually does manage to figure out that this is not actually the North Pole. What, the moment he sees a black kid speaking in the same manner that the 90s style black kids talk like in a booth. Okay? So he pulls his one of his many laser guns at Brian, pretty much just yells and explodes a little bit. Yeah, this is the kid that still leaves in Santa. So, 
So, of course, we go back to the car. Brian's like, Stewie, calm down, calm down. Just tell me what you want Santa to get to you, and I'll make sure he gets the message. But Stewie's like, I don't want to actually... I don't want Santa to bring me anything. Brian's like, why, why do you want to see Santa then? And Stewie's like, because... I'm going to kill him. So let me get this straight. A mad genius kid. A kid who went back in time to become his own ancestor to save the universe from exploding or wiping out of existence. Believes in Santa and wants to kill him. Sure, why not? So, and for some reason, Brian can't bring himself to say that Santa's not real. So, I guess with that little failure, Stewie somehow manages to get onto a trucker's truck and just head off north somewhere. So, Brian gets in his car and he follows the truck. They go through several states and they eventually go into Canada. And after a little drive in Canada, Stewie accidentally sets off a flare gun inside the truck, causes the truck to swerve in all the lanes, causes multiple car accidents, explosions, injuries, probably some death. Even Brian's car, like, flips and lands in the snow, but somehow he barely has a scratch on him, and Stewie barely has a scratch on him. He's just on the side of the road, hitchhiking. Okay, go. Yo. Dude, you just... Do you not just see what happened? So, so apparently now is the time for Brian to tell Stewie that Santa's not real. So what was with the whole point a couple minutes ago where you couldn't bring yourself to tell him? And so, uh, that's pointless, I suppose. And even though Brian says Santa's not real, Stewie says that Brian's lying, and in the process of saying that Brian's lying, he also drops that he still believes in the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy. I just remembered something. In this TV show universe, they have established that both God and Jesus Christ exist as actual divine beings. That's right, in this universe, Christianity, or some version of Christianity, exists. Like, there's multiple episodes where Jesus is on Earth, people know he's Jesus, and they've seen several of the things he's actually done. So, why is the world not in chaos? Seriously, why is the world not in chaos? I mean, in the real world, if we found out that not only does God exist, but he's actually a Christian God, people would exp implode. So, I guess I can sort of understand why Stewie would think that Santa's also real if Jesus Christ and God are real. But anyway, they just try to find a way to hitchhike, I suppose, just to get this done with. And the Canadian stereotype joke drives up, just pretty much gives him his snowmobile, and they, and Stewie and Brian head off north. And they go on until it's like the middle of the night, and it runs out of gas. Yeah, I'm sure gas lasts for that long, but whatever. So they stop into this old abandoned cabin for the night, and in the morning they continue going on north. And they actually come across this huge gate that... A and apparently that's enough for Stewie to say, Ha! I told you! The North Pole's real! Santa's we real! And Brian, I guess, accepts this is a sign that Santa Claus is real. I think I would ask for a little more proof. So they do open the gate, and what's in it? A factory! That's right, Santa's a capitalist. And it's a pretty badly run factory. Like, there's sewage, there's pollution. And Brian's like, what the heck's this? Stewie's not really paying that much attention. He goes up to the factory, knocks on the door, and out comes the most sickly, death, ill-stricken Santa I have ever seen. Like, he's like this close to death. Opens the door, sees the Brian, Stewie, his little gun. And so he asks, are you Santa? He's like, yeah. Who are you? 
My name's Stewie Griffin, and I'm here to kill you. So, like I said, this is a two-part episode of Fence, so this is where the first episode ended. Second episode starts right where the first one ended with Stewie saying he's about to kill him. Sans like, oh, thank God, please kill me. Wait, what? Yeah, like, Santa gets on his knees, takes a gun, points at his face, like, kill me, kill me. And even though that's exactly why Stewie came all the way up to the North Pole, he's like, no, I'm not going to do this. this. There's no fun. There's no sportsmanship in this. Dude, you... But last... You just said you wanted to kill Santa. This is your chance. Ah, I wish I had eggnog. So Brian's now asking Santa, what's going on? What's with the North Pole? So Santa begins his story of saying, in the beginning, Christmas was fun. It was like the usual typical Christmas that people talk about. But then as the world population grew, as demands for more toys and more complicated toys happened, and like started popping up, drastic things changed. Like he went from one small family of elves to this Great big mini elves, due to the result of inbreeding. Yeah, that's right. These elves don't have the skills to actually speak or do anything intellectual besides making toys. And this caused pollution and smog and all that stuff. And I guess somehow they're still able to make iPhones because that's because Santa's like, do you have any idea how hard it is to make an iPhone? So wait, how can they be intelligent enough to make an iPhone then if they can't even speak actual languages? And how are you even allowed to make iPhones? Is the North Pole owned by Apple? Oh my god, the North Pole is owned by Apple. It's global domination! But he, Santa also says that when an elf just like, it's time for me to die, they just walk out of the factory into the snow because the reindeer have somehow gained a craving for elf flesh and eat the elves. Yeah, that's pretty dark. So Brian's like, Santa, how did you let this happen? Santa's like, I didn't do this. Christmas did this. And then they go into the song known as Christmas Time is Killing Us. And to be completely honest, this is actually a really good song. Yeah, I know it's like really dark and grim, but it's a really well done song and showing like the hardship of Christmas that it has on Santa and everyone at the North Pole. It's actually a song well worth checking out. It's definitely one of their least offensive songs. In fact, I don't even think it has any offensive nature in it at all. So look it up. Christmas time is killing us. So as soon as the song ends, Santa collapses on the floor. And I guess Brian and Stewie take him to his bed where a parent, where the elf doctor, wait, wait, did I just say that right? Uh, an elf doctor? But we just saw all the elves, they can't even speak, let alone be doctors. So how is there an elf that's able to actually be intelligent and be a doctor? I, ah, whatever. Anyway. So the elf doctor's like, Christmas is killing this man. If he goes out tonight to deliver presents, he's going to die. So Stewie and Brian take it upon themselves to do Christmas for Santa. Brian tells Santa that they'll do it for him. Santa's like, thank you, Brian. Soon I will be with Allah. What? <laughs> and I was like, I don't, no, no, don't worry about that. Just, just, just go. No, no, no. Santa just said Allah. The Arabic word for God. Allah. Even Zoe's like, are we really not going to talk about the whole Allah thing? So like I said before, this is a universe that has God. A, a Christian version of God, at least. That exists, along with Jesus. I guess, in addition to Santa Claus being real, he's also either Arabic or a Muslim? How is this universe not in chaos? How? How is this universe not in chaos? I mean, you have a God. You have Jesus Christ. Both divine. Both very Christian-like. And you also have Santa Claus that's real in addition to that. And on top of that, 
Santa might actually be a Muslim. <sighs> it's it, I I wish I can legally drink because I really need a drink after hearing that. So Sant so Brian and Stewie put on their Santa gear. They somehow managed to get the reindeer to actually fly the sleigh as they head off. So at the first house they stop at, they crash land with reindeer stuck in a tree over here and the sled in the snow over here. Good job. They break into the house, not through the chimney, but by throwing a rock through the window. And I guess Stewie then going through the window and opening the door from the inside. Yeah. And Brian just throws presents out into the tree. So he's like, no, don't throw them. You gotta place them with care. Brian's just taking cookies. That's for Santa. So he's like, you can't eat those. Those are for Santa. But we are Santa. No, you can't do that. And Brian's like, you know what? I'm Santa tonight. If I want to, I'll make myself a sandwich. Box up the kitchen. Where are you going? I'm making myself a sandwich. And getting some chips, too. Struggles with a chip bag. Explodes chips all over the kitchen. And that attracts the attention of the dad who comes downstairs, sees the two of them, and makes a move to call the cops. So, what do Stewie and Brian do to rectify the situation? They take a baseball bat and they beat the crap out of him. Like, I'm pretty sure that guy is dead. And that attracts the attention of the mom and the little girl from upstairs. So they tie them up, duct tape them, try to make it look like a break and end. They end up just, like, cleaning up the house. And so... So Stewie tells Brian to get the little boy upstairs. That's who the bat is for. But when Brian comes down, they're saying there's a little boy. And so he's like, oh my god, we're in the wrong house. And then they hear police sirens in the distance. And Stewie just sort of freaks out. It's like, dang, this is horrible. This is terrible. First of all, this is a break in, breaking and entering and robbery. And this is basically all sorts of felonies right now. But... They are at the Ron house, and they spent an hour and a half at the wrong house. Now, that's right. They say they spent an hour and a half here at a house that's not even the right house. So, yeah, you they now understand why it's so freaking crazy for Santa, because this is a living nightmare. So... They get to the sleigh, and Stewie somehow found the time to modify the sleigh where it doesn't need the reindeer who are now eating themselves to work. So they fly off in the sky, and they're pretty goddamn depressed. They're like, uh, we, I can't believe it. We let down Christmas, and they're pretty sad about it. But Brian somehow figures out a... Apparently has a plan of how he can still save Christmas. But then it cuts from them in the middle of the night to... Christmas morning, where we go back to the Griffin house, and as the family comes down, there are no presents under the tree. Wait. There are no presents? No presents under the tree. Alright. I know I've been harping on the lot illogical nature of this TV universe, but I have to say something. Even though Santa is apparently real in this universe, they will still get each other presents, right? Like, it's not just Santa who brings presents. When the husband and wife buy themselves presents and their kids, and when the kids buy their parents presents as well, there'd still be presents under the tree. There just won't be any from Santa. So how are there no presents under the tree? Make sense, movie. Or TV special. It just makes sense. So they turn on the channel and there's the news that apparently no one in the world got any presents. Yeah, because at least... Does everyone just celebrate Christmas even though there are clearly still Jewish people and Muslim people and people of other religions? Because like I said, Christian God, Jesus Christ. But apparently, Brian means they're like, Hey, 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 I'm on the news. Listen to me, listen to me. I have something very important to say that can explain everything. 
and they bring Santa, who's on a wheelchair, connected to, like, an IV bag, and they bring him onto the screen, and I guess they just accept this is the real Santa, as Brian says, all of our greed and all of our demands of Christmas have pushed Santa to the brink of death, and if we don't, and we can still save Christmas, we just have to ask for one gift a year, just ask for one gift, because if we, and Brian says, even though it's in our nature to be greedy, we have to make a sacrifice here. Because if we don't, we may never have Christmas again. So like I said, everyone just accepts that's the real Santa. And I guess everyone agrees to only ask for one gift for Christmas. Then it cuts to next year. And apparently just that happened. Everyone asked for only one gift. Even though people should still buy each other presents because... Like I said, husband buys wife gift, wife buys husband gift, parents buy children gifts, children buy parents gifts. That should still happen. But they only ask for one present from Santa, and the elves are actually normal elves, and Santa's back to his big, jolly old self, and it ends with the special focus on the Griffin family on Christmas Day, and that's the end. And that's, and that's the Family Guy two-part Christmas special, Road to the North Pole. It's really not a TV show that, that's about continuity and making logical sense. And to be honest, this is actually one of my favorite Christmas specials. Yeah, I know it's crazy, it's weird, and it's Family Guy, but... It still has a actually a really valid message because it talks about how Christmas has become really commercialized and about how people just want more presents, they want more. And it really shows that peop a lot of people have forgotten what Christmas is supposed to be about. And while there are other specials that have like a similar message, this one has its own unique take on it, its own unique style, and I really appreciate it for that. So, if you really don't mind the pop culture and cutaway gag humor of Family Guy, then I definitely recommend this because it's one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite Christmas specials. But yeah, like I said, it makes no logical sense in terms of TV universe continuity. But then again, nothing in the show makes sense. So, if you really want to check it out, I still recommend that you check it out if you have any interest in watching it. Because that song, Christmas Time is Killing Us, is very dark, but it's actually a really good song. And that's what I have to say for that. And I'm Dr. Cinema. See you next time.